back in the studio. Surprise, motherfucker. All right, man, Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. Look, man, look, man, I'm back, man, I'm back. I know y'all miss me. I miss y'all too, man. There's a bunch of different things going on I had to uh, take care of, you know. But I'm back, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, we won't get to it, you know what I'm saying? It's a couple of things I'm going to drop. Sorry I didn't drop the 12 o'clock episode uh, yesterday. Uh, and, um, sorry I didn't drop the 12 o'clock episode uh, in the six o'clock episode because I was actually traveling and I couldn't get to anything, but I did my best. So before we get into that, you know, so what are we talking about today? All right. Um, Drake, Kendrick and Cole, is this beef going to be between just Drake and Kendrick or is Cole getting involved against Drake? And if he does, that's going to be really bad for him. So let's get to it, man. We're going to get to it. Let me get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, welcome in. Thank you for coming in. Let me work for your subscription today. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content. It's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, shout out to all the people that left a donation. Going to be promoting your channel and whoever else. Leave a donation and want me to put your channel up. I will. It is what it is. We're trying to make money together. Let's go. Um, You know, shout out to y'all. All the beautiful, sexy ladies. Put one in the chat. All the fellas. Y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't, you know, you know. And um, they called me the Hidden Gym. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over, over 11,000. Actually, 11,100. So we trying to get to a million. And let me know where you're from. So let's get to the content, man. No more talking. I'm sorry. All right. So this comes courtesy of Fantastic Hip Hop. You know what it is. The links will be in the description. Uh, all this good stuff. So let's get it, man. <laughs> now, as we are living within such a pivotal time in hip hop right now, as during this current moment, more than ever, lines are being drawn in the sand between which rappers and factions of hip hop collectives will be working with and supporting one another following a period where everyone was going at it. And now most significantly at the core of all of this are of course what was considered the big three of hip hop in Kendrick Lamar, Drake, and J. Cole. And as we obviously know where Kendrick and Drake stand against each other, there is nothing to discover there at this point, but out of this trio, the one who has been making more and more noise with each one of his recent moves and who has been questioning people to dig for more information and put these complicated pieces together is J. Cole, because as recently, we have seen J. Cole go on a feature run where he has been working alongside rappers and producers who are directly engaged in conflict with Drake, and this is following a time where Drake did indeed talk about Cole very dismissingly on his own diss tracks this year. It's safe to say that at the very least, J. Cole and Drake are no longer on any sort of speaking terms and despite the run they had together in 2023 and early 2024. Drake will never work with Cole again or respect him in the same way he once did because of how he backed out of the beef they were both involved in with Kendrick Lamar. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if I totally agree with that. I have to see some tangible evidence of Drake and Cole actually beefing. Because I know that we have this thing where we speculate and we can we can err on the side of speculation. That's cool. But we have to understand that sometimes when you speculate, you could be wrong. And I'm thinking that I haven't seen anything that will significantly say, yeah, they are not messing with each other. I mean, he said Cole, you know, and, and I, I put it to you like this. In order for me to believe that J. Cole and Drake has an issue, it would have to be J. Cole have to come out and say that. Because, number one, what happened when J. Cole had an issue with Kendrick? Then he wouldn't apologize. He don't seem like he's the type of guy that would just diss Drake after he was spending all that time with Drake. It doesn't make sense to me. But let's keep it going. And then as a result, how this pretty much left Drake alone to fend for himself in a feud that he clearly could not handle. And with Cole, as Drake disrespected his name and his decisions that he made as a man, 
It's clear that Cole is staying far away from somebody whose energy pretty much projects the exact opposite of everything he stands for. And now, with Cole and Drake separated after joining forces, this leaves us with one remaining question about this trio, which is, of course, where does J. Cole stand with Kendrick Lamar? And now, well, just a few months ago, this question would have been impossible to answer, and if anything, it seemed like Kendrick Lamar hated J. Cole for linking up with Drake the way he did, and then for pretty much disrespecting that's another misconception, too. I don't think that Kendrick Lamar hated J. Cole. I think Kendrick Lamar is in the spirit of competition, and he wants to be the best. So in order for him to be the best, he has to beat the best, and the best was those two in his class. So I don't believe that Kendrick Lamar is uh, actively trying to take down J. Cole. You know what I'm saying? He said, he said his name. Cole and Arby know I'm a selfish nigga. The crown is heavy. Yeah, he basically said that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. But I don't think that he... Because the thing about Kendrick Lamar, I think people got to understand, Kendrick Lamar is a loner. He wants to stand alone by himself. You, I mean, you got his TDE brothers around him. But for the most part, he does. He goes in alone. He's a loner. And I would say J. Cole's like that too. J. Cole's like that. More than, more than, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, when it comes to their own album now, J. Cole probably has have the most features, I believe. Rap features. I think Drake, of course, has the most features. But rap features, I believe J. Cole has the most. You know what I'm saying? But at, at the same time, I don't think that Kendrick Lamar hated uh, J. Cole him with first person shooter. At this point, it seems like this couldn't be further from the truth because it doesn't just look like their tension has settled down, but it actually seems like they are on pretty good terms and we may have even just found out that they indeed have a song coming together in the near future, but now in order to understand this, we need to first look at where Cole and Kendrick left off in the midst of all the musical fireworks that went off this year because while the narrative between Kendrick and Drake was obviously very clear, with Kendrick and Cole, things have always been a lot more complicated because as Cole was directly dissed on Like That, although he was the secondary target, and then Cole obviously dissed Kendrick back on 7 Minute Drill. They once were fully engaged in a back and forth, but now as of course J. Cole backed out of this feud when he apologized for that track and what he did. He seemingly- And that's the reason why I don't think that J. Cole is beefing with Drake because if he was beefing with Drake, in my opinion, J. Cole seems like out of all of them, he wears his, I believe he's kind of like one of those guys that he can't really hide his emotions. He wears his heart on his sleeve. And I think that he will put it out there that if him and Drake wasn't messing around. Like he, he's just not one of those type of MCs. But I just don't see that happen and him being on stage with Drake and doing all his tours with Drake and, doing, and bringing out Drake and he going and doing this with Drake. And then all of a sudden now, out of the blue, he disses Drake. You know what I'm saying? It must have had, it have to, it, something had to had had to happen for that to happen. Cause I think I think J. Cole is the guy who plays the middle out of both of the two. He's the media. And I think that if anybody was to bring Kendrick and Drake together, would probably be him. You know what I'm saying? To be honest with you, because he's cool with both sides. Now he definitely did come at Kendrick. And he said after he came at him, he never did nothing wrong to me. That's my, like, basically, that's my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know why I did that. But it could be because it was this, the, the MC spirit in him. But outside of that, you flip it on the other side. I don't think that, you know, unless something happened between him and Drake that we don't know about, I just don't see him repeating the same mistake. You know what I'm saying? I just don't see that happening changed the tides with this move and at least brought his and Kendrick's relationship to a point of peace on his end. And now again, while we don't know the full story behind Cole backing out, and the only thing that's tried to clarify any of what happened is an alleged story that says that Kendrick's fellow TDE member Schoolboy Q, who indeed was at Dreamville Fest, went and told Cole that all of this is so much bigger than just him and rap. And before things went the way we all saw they eventually did, he should exit the beef. Regardless of what was behind this moment, Cole's exit obviously hit the 
the reset button on his and Kendrick's relationship. And eventually, we got further proof that in a lot of ways it did, as when Kendrick Lamar came out and began to unravel his diss tracks on Drake. While Cole was referenced and alluded to a few times to help set the scene of all Kendrick was frustrated about and to explain why he is this angry and determined to take the crown of rap and have nobody ever be able to snatch it back from him, Cole was never actually disrespected by Kendrick lyrically, and when he dropped Not Like Us, he of course said the line, did Cole foul, I don't know why you still pretending. And now as when this song dropped, there was just- Yeah, that was a fart. That was a fire bar. That was a fire bar. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, that's something that we don't know. So, I mean, maybe Kendrick knows something that we don't. So I don't know. That was a good catch though. Let's go. So much that made the entire world go crazy. It seems like we really forgot about this bar and brushed over it in a lot of ways, but the more we go back to it and contextualize the entire message and moment of the song, while there is no definitive answer of what this is fully alluding to, there are a lot of theories and interpretations that have went around about this bar and what it is trying to say. And no matter which theory you subscribe to, and speaking of subscribing, make sure you are to the channel while you're at it. From Kendrick's tone and just from seeing everything we have now, it's clear that at the bottom line. Kendrick is calling Drake out here for wronging J. Cole, and now whether this is referring to the way Drake turned on Cole in his own diss tracks, or this is Kendrick just referring to the position Drake put J. Cole in by trying to align himself with him closer than ever, and then as a result- Now I agree with that. I definitely think that Drake tried to use J. Cole as if he was Megatron and, 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 uh, and uh, J. Cole was uh, Soundwave. You know what I'm saying? Th th that, to me, that makes th the most sense. You know what I'm saying? He he, he picked up Soundwave, turned him into a pistol to try to get him out of here. It's like, you know, subliminally, of course. And this is the reason why I think that, uh, I don't know. I don't know if, if, again, that may be the reason why, that may be the reason why uh, um, Kendrick said what he said about him uh, didn't doing him foul. You know what I'm saying? So. Further from Kendrick and the spaces in hip hop that actually should be respected in the months leading up to this beef. Overall, we can tell that Kendrick is calling out Drake for not respecting Cole the way he should have, considering the run that they just had together, regardless of what happened in his beef with Kendrick. And at this time, as Kendrick showed that he respected J. Cole's decision on some level by just not attacking him further lyrically, and really when we look at it all, just by defending him in this moment ultimately, meanwhile, Drake just punched down on him in his own diss tracks and then kept mocking and Cole through cryptic posts on his plot twist account later on. We see that in this complicated triad of the defining rappers of our time, Drake and J. Cole's relationship has only seemed to get more complicated and soured with each day that passes, but now with Kendrick and Cole, from when Cole apologized all the way to now, it seems like with all of the dust settling that they haven't just avoided any further conflict with one another, but that there is a clear respect that they hold mutually, because especially on Kendrick Lamar's end, if he really wanted to take Cole out and break him down for releasing a diss track on him and then taking it back, he had all of the leeway to decimate him lyrically if he wanted to. But as we saw, he clearly didn't want to do this, and when we look at the bigger picture of this beef and the scope of all of it, now looking back on all of this, it really shouldn't be a surprise that Kendrick didn't go any further on Cole because- And that's, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. I think that if Kendrick Lamar wanted to come at J. Cole, he could have did it. Uh, he could have did it, trust me. <laughs> like He's not scared of J. Cole. He would have easily got him out of here too, the same way. Maybe a little bit different when it comes to alert, like bars, but Kendrick Lamar is one of one. It's like you can't, you can't, you can't copy that. You know what I'm saying? I think he definitely would have. It wouldn't have even been no, no, no sweat off his back. He would have got him out of here too. You know what I'm saying? It's just he probably would have just did it a little bit different. But they have a little, they have a, a better relationship. And I think J. Cole is much more of a real person than Drake. J. Cole is much more of a real person. He's more of a, he's more of a, uh, uh, just realist. You know what I'm saying? He's down to earth. Drake is like, he just doesn't care. Whatever the consequences come, it just comes. Let's go. As we have seen over and over again, from the pop-out show to Kendrick's Black Air Force's track to the Super Bowl halftime show announcement, 
The goal of this beef was never to just feud with Drake and Cole for that matter to take them down for the sake of doing so, but to come at Drake in the manner he did. It was to take down what has become the establishment and status quo in hip hop and the manifestation of all of the worst things we have ever seen in the genre, because as we have all witnessed and realized that at this point, Drake has done way more harm than good to rap as a whole as he has devalued the state of artistry and album making and has made the culture more gimmick and number driven than ever. For Kendrick and his mission of bringing hip hop back to a place where it's more in tune with its roots and where it's once again a space and genre that honors its artistry over anything else. Taking down Drake was not a choice, but in order for any of what he wanted to achieve for it to work and make the slightest impact possible, he had no other choice than to just humiliate him. And while Cole did get- And I agree with that. I definitely think that Kendrick had no choice. And the thing is, is when you're trying to be the best, you can't, you can't let up. You got to, you got to put your foot down and that's it. And I think a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Drake fans are very, very spoiled. And I think that they, they automatically just put Drake in the, in the number one spot. They don't care how he got there. They don't care about any other thing. They just only care about him and his number ones. That's it. They don't care if his rap. They just look at it from that point of view. Oh, he's the most popular. So obviously he has to be the best. So that's how they look at it. Caught in the middle of all of this initially. When we look at this real goal of Kendrick's and CJ Cole, it's not hard to determine that for where Kendrick is at right now and where he is trying to bring hip hop to, it would not make any sense to destroy somebody that no matter what you can say about him, from his features, which he does with artists of all sizes and from all corners of the culture, just for the pure love of the sport, to his style, which in of itself keeps him solidified as one of the only superstars rap has seen over the past decade who is still known for their bars and lyrical ability over anything else. When it comes to what everything Kendrick Lamar is fighting for means on the most pivotal and important level, J. Cole is one of the most vital people to this movement and one of the only other superstars left who is really honoring what Kendrick Lamar fought so hard for this year to preserve. And understanding this and being aware of the fact that Cole is now also working with people who are affiliated with Kendrick Lamar and Top Dog Entertainment with an MC like Daylight, which at the end of the day is showing us that any tension between them has vanished because otherwise, the crew and people that backed Kendrick more than anyone in this entire situation did would not go and do something that doesn't support the interests of what they just pulled off to create one of the biggest moments in all of modern music. Everything is leading to the fact that now as J. Cole unloads all of these features he's had sitting around and is getting ready for what more than ever has become the most important album of his career in the fall off, and Kendrick Lamar's new album will also be releasing sometime in the near future. As the two defining MCs of the last 15 years prepare for what has now become the most important albums of their careers and the ones that are most pivotal to not just their own legacies but rap as a whole. What would be the most powerful thing they can do and what would be the most powerful message they could send to the rest of the hip hop world as we walk away from this feud and process what happened would be a collaboration with one another because more than ever, it would just mean so much for the genre and for Kendrick Lamar's mission especially. As him and Cole doing a song and celebrating rap in its most pure form would break the entire music world and once and for all, create a full circle moment that officially closes the door of hip hop on Drake and- Yeah, um... I actually think that they can actually pull this off. I know a lot of Drake fans. See, the thing is, this is the one thing that I notice about Drake fans and Drake people that follow him. They think that this is a temporary thing. They can't believe they're living in a state of delusion. They can't believe that Drake actually fell off. This is this is the fall off for Drake. And I, and I want y'all to be clear. I want, I want to be clear about this. He fell off. There's no, everybody has their fall off season. A lot of y'all might argue that he hasn't fell off because y'all try to use numbers to skew perception, but it doesn't work like that. He fell off. He's fell off since the last two albums. You can't say because his album went uh, platinum or so it, it means he didn't fall off. That's not true because there's some people who rap way better than him that don't sell albums and have, have great quality music. He fell off since uh he probably fell off before um was it honestly never mind and what was the other one uh uh what was the other one certified lover boy before certified lover boy that's when he started to take a dip started doing just regular wild stuff like nothing new nothing nothing groundbreaking you know what i'm saying that's just that so i me personally think that he already fell off and y'all just giving him excuses to just keep him there you know what I'm saying? But 
I could argue that he's been, he been at the bottom of the barrel. He just got, got smoked and this is where he's at today. Leave us with an image where the guy who didn't care for the art form of rap with the respect and love that it deserves will be shut out from everything. Meanwhile, the other two rappers in this situation who represent the best and most pure parts of the genre will never look stronger. And now while we are yet to see how this will materialize and when it will be coming, there are rumblings in the industry pointing to the fact that this is on the table as none other than on the Rory and Mal podcast, which despite Mal being an OVO affiliate at this point, has proven that from Drake drop and pushups to Kendrick Lamar working on a new album months before anybody knew. These guys have shown that they do have some insider information that they seem to mask as speculation for the time being and specifically, on their show, they talked about Kendrick Lamar being the sole feature on the fall off. And now considering how the tides flipped between J. Cole and Drake, and he was originally supposed to be a feature on the fall off, and now seeing how the stakes of everything have changed, it really does seem like everything is pointing to the fact that we will see Cole and Kendrick do a song on this project or through something else in the near future. So all in all, it's safe to say that as Cole and Kendrick's tensions are squashed and they seem to be closer and on better terms than they have been in years, sometime in the near future, we will be seeing something from them that will shake the entire music world and especially hip hop in a way like we have never seen before. So now with all that said, let me know. What do you think of this prospect of Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole doing a collab together in the near future? And how do you think this would sound and how big of a moment do you think it would be? Now I can't wait to hear what you have to say. And now if- Yeah, so I'm gonna end it there. Make sure y'all go follow him. Yeah, so here's the thing. I definitely don't know if if Kendrick is going to be on the fall off, but if he if he does, that's going to be pretty huge. You know what I'm saying? Because if Kendrick Lamar is on the fall off, yeah, it's going to be a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie. It's going to be a big deal. And that is, that's going to solidify maybe not the fact that, that uh, Drake and, and Cole is not fucking with each other, but it's going to solidify that J. Cole just does what he wants. And he, it doesn't matter. Because at this point, he already jumped on a couple of tracks where there was supposed to, be, supposed to be enemies of Drake. And again, I mean, some people just don't look at it that way. But I, I know some people are dissecting his last feature with, uh, what's the name, with uh, Daylight. And they're saying that he's coming at Drake. I mean, I have to uh, go back and do a, a deep dive into that. Maybe I could find something. But I haven't heard anything of, of any significant cell. So yeah, he's talking about Drake. You know what I'm saying? Like, haven't heard that. Because I think if, if if J. Cole, J. Cole's very slick too. He, they, all three of them are slick. They're slick subliminal guys. All of them. I would argue that maybe uh, J. Cole's might be, J. Cole might be a little more slicker than them. You know what I'm saying? The thing about Kendrick though is, because people are always saying that J. Cole's the better lyricist out of the both, out of the two. You know what I'm saying? I, I kind of like differ on that because I think J. Cole is, is when it comes to pure writing, he might be there, but see, he's doing something that Kendrick already done already. You go back and listen to old Kendrick. He was rapping like that before, before, not to say before J. Cole, but he was rapping like that years ago. So it's not that he can't because Kendrick can pin, he can pin. He just don't do that as much, but Trust and believe. And it's not always about who has the better bars when it comes to stuff. You know what I'm saying? To be honest with you, it's about who's, who words are more impactful. Because if you somebody, if you got 10 people over here who like bars and you got 10 people over here who like impact, the bars are always going to go but so far. And it's going to just go right here and then it's going to take a dip. Impact goes like this and it goes like this and it goes like this. And it goes like this, and it keeps going up. Why do y'all think uh, cleaning out my closet was so popular? You know what I'm saying? Um, um, Stan was so popular. It's impact. It wasn't necessarily do with bars, but those, those that was impact. You know what I'm saying? I am what I say I am. If it wasn't, why would I say I am? The paper, news every day I am. I don't know. That's just the way I am. Like, can, would you say that that's bars? Nah, that's just impact right there. That's that's just regular rapping, but I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why would I say I am? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't get around that. That's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? So either way, man, I just wanted to put that out there. Y'all have yourself a good, 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 good evening. 
I'm going to drop this at six. This is going to be the six o'clock show for today. Yeah, man, I'm back on track, man. Sorry, I missed y'all, man. I really did miss y'all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for those two days, I can't stay away. Like a crazy ex-boyfriend. Well, not really. All right, man. See y'all. Peace, bye. <laughs>